So I have the cards right here. All right. So we lay the cards out, and the way the cards are arranged, this card is the overview. This is going to give us an overview uh, related to your question. The middle card is a challenge card. That's going to indicate a challenge that you might be facing as you move forward. And the last card is an action card, a recommended action relative to the question. As I'm reading, I'm also going to try to narrate a little bit of my inner process so you get some idea of how it works to, to put all of this together in a reading. And for today, I'm not going to read reverse cards. In the uh, second course coming up, uh, we will talk about reading reverse cards. I mentioned it a little bit in the first course. Um, but for today, I'm just going to read upright cards. So the first card we have is the Queen of Swords. That's the overview. Challenge is the Eight of Wands. And the action is the Queen of Cups. Okay. And so the first thing I notice when I look at this is um, I am reading for a woman. And I have two very powerful female cards in the spread. So there is a readiness on the part of this person for the uh, information. I also notice there are no major arcana. And what that suggests to me is whatever is going on with this issue or with this question, the resolution of it or the decisions that need to be made in order to move forward are really up to you. <laughs> There's not going to be any, um, you know, transpersonal archetypal energy pushing you right now. So this is a period where you're going to be having to make some decisions. I also notice, even though there are only three cards, a nice um, scattering of the suits. We have the swords, which, as you know from the course, represent the element of air, the function of thinking. We have wands, which uh, refer to the element of fire and the function of intuition. And we have the queen of cups, which represents water and the function of feeling. The energy of the queens is a holding or gestating energy. So the first thing I would say to you is, in terms of the overview, this is something, this is an issue or a question that you have been pondering uh, intellectually, using your thinking function, trying to figure things out for quite some time. If we look at the hand of the queen, you see what looks maybe like a bracelet or a mala. Um, this can be interpreted in a variety of ways. One way is if it's a mala or, or meditation beads, you have really been pondering this deeply. Some tarot interpreters see that as a rope that was once tied around the queen's hands and she has now broken free. So there's some sense of freedom. And from the beckoning of her hand and the way she's holding her sword, she's ready for what is coming next. Uh, if we look at the way she's holding the sword, the position she has the sword is a position not for dubbing someone a knight, but actually for cutting through. So what I, I'll put all of that together and say that what you are uh, trying to consider here, you're ready for. You want to cut through any of the doubts, any of the worries, and make a decision, move forward, uh, take a next step. However, you're challenged by all of these wands, which are intuition. We can also think of them as creativity. We can think of them as the, the fiery energy of just ideas and ideas that are, are going to be wanting to be embodied. This is one of the few cards in the tarot that has no people in it. And so as a challenge, what this means is when you make a decision to move forward, when you decide, I want to move forward, there is uh, almost a sense of being overwhelmed by possibilities. 
uh, overwhelm these possibilities could be external possibilities. They also could be internal possibilities. And whatever they are, they're coming at you very, very strongly. And so the action you're going to need to take relative to all of those ideas, all of that creative energy coming at you is make your choice based on the feeling function. This is the Queen of Cups. She is pondering this cup. She looks very, very grave. If we look at the face of the Queen of Swords, we have that same gravitas. So very clearly, you're taking this question seriously. You've been spending time using the function of the intellect. And the cards are saying the action you need to take, since you've done all the thinking and you have all the ideas kind of coming at you, boom, 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 you want to spend time now looking at where are your feelings taking you? Where are you being drawn in terms of feeling? Your ability to use intellect to plan and problem solve is serving you well. But with so much coming up for you, so many possibilities, so much potential, you need to dig deep into the feelings because this next step, the next phase of your life is going to be pulling you primarily uh, using the function of feeling. Now, remember, both thinking and feeling from a Jungian perspective are ways that we evaluate things. When we use thinking, we evaluate them according to logic, reason, uh, you know, kind of a linear planning, uh, problem solving. When we evaluate things from the perspective of feeling, we evaluate them in terms of what, what movement is happening inside of me that's drawing me toward one thing or another. Which one of these options represented here feels best to me? So this is a time, I think, to set aside the intellect and allow yourself to access what we might call non-rational means of discernment, dreams, um, maybe jotting down things that come to you on a random basis. I would suggest that you keep a pad of paper near you. And if you get an idea, write it down and then see which feels better. <laughs>